To love God means to submit totally to Him. Jesus in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, underscores this sentiment. He states that we should seek first the kingdom of God and all the rest will fall in line. This is exemplified in Luke chapter 7, verse 47, in the case of the sinful woman who anointed the feet of Jesus. Jesus remained completely within the framework of the Old Testament. What Jesus actually corrected was the love for neighbor that they practiced in the Old Testament. Thus, in John chapter 13, verse 34, Jesus states, John 13, 34, I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. So he qualifies, he, he, he fine tunes this love, love one another, not any old way you love one another as I have loved you. In Christianity, love of neighbor is the main commandment that leads people to perfection. So we move from obedience, well, I wouldn't say move from obedience, we take obedience with us, the compassion, the mercy that Luke presents, and we in that, we inculcate that into our lives and we try now to love our neighbor because for us as Christians, love of neighbor is the main commandment that leads us to perfection. And we are all here because we want to be perfect. The Master himself has given us that command. Be perfect as the Heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospels, Matthew chapter 23. Matthew, sorry, Matthew chapter 5 verse 23. Matthew chapter 9 verse 13, Matthew chapter 22 verse 39, Mark chapter 3 verses 1 to 6, and Luke chapter 13 verses 10 to 17, all attest to this fact. The gospel, Gospels explain that love of neighbor ought to be held in high esteem. In fact, it must give way to everything even the offering of sacrifices and the celebration of the Sabbath. The Cantic of, of Love is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and provides an apt conclusion. It tells us, Love is always patient and kind, never jealous. Love is not boastful or conceited. It is never rude and never seeks out its own advantage. It does not take offense or store up grievances. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but finds its joy in the truth. It is always ready to make allowances, to trust, to hope, and to endure whatever comes. So, in your spare time, Familiarize yourself with 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Read it out, write it out, and make those words a reality in your life. Tomorrow we look at another aspect of the love of Almighty God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.